What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm super excited to bring you what I think is maybe the most complete guide to TikTok ads in 2020. Now, there's very little information on the internet so I kind of just want to compile a uh, essentially a list of the steps that you need to take in order to start generating an insane amount of profit with TikTok ads like I was able to do with a brand new Shopify store. But we'll talk about that in a second. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so before we hop into the tutorial, I just kind of want to prove that I, I sort of know what I'm talking about when it comes to TikTok ads, although I would still definitely consider myself a beginner. So this is a store that I showed a couple of videos ago where I basically just started at only with TikTok ads and I, I scaled it pretty aggressively as you can see. It definitely dipped a lot there. Um, I had a ton of issues with spending and stuff like that, but uh, that's, a, that's a conversation for another video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh this and then I'm actually going to show you the, uh, the ad spend on this store, which in my opinion is like the most impressive thing um, because if you look at this, it's, uh, it's like what, 260,000 in revenue? Uh, so like a quarter million basically. And then if you look at my TikTok ad spend for this store, it is uh, just over $66,000. And then I maybe spent like 10, maybe like 15,000 uh, on Facebook. I'm mostly just doing retargeting there. Uh, so if you kind of like uh, divide that out, that's over a 3.25 ROAS on the store. And I would say that's pretty freaking decent for just not knowing what I was doing with TikTok ads. Um, <laughs> and then it, it kind of grew to more of an intermediate level, I guess, with TikTok ads. But yeah, I'm definitely still learning a lot. All right, so with that out of the way, I just kind of want to go ahead and hop into uh, what I think is probably the first step of starting a super successful TikTok dropshipping store. Now, there's a lot of product criteria that I have found to work ideal, ideally, really well, whatever. But um, I, I do want to say that it's not like kind of make or break because in reality, I've only tested like 35, maybe 40 products with TikTok, which may seem like a lot, but consider like hundreds that I've tested on Facebook, I would say that I, uh, I, I don't have enough room to tell you what is going to work and what's not going to work. But what I've seen work really well for me is products that are lower ticket, so anywhere from 15 to $40, um, products that have a target age of like a younger demographic, so like 13 to 25, probably not 13 because not many 13 year olds are going to buy stuff from you. So I would say like anywhere from like the 16 to 30 range is, uh, is going to work best. Also, eye catching products is really, really important. Uh, definitely with any product in general, but especially with TikTok because, uh, it's just so visual and you need to have something that really stands out in a video or people just simply aren't going to watch your ad. So trending products, um, that store that I just showed you, that's a trending product. And trending products definitely work best with TikTok, but it's not necessary by any means. And I also think that you can use trending products from the past that may not currently be trending. Um, and then I really, really recommend having like good margins with TikTok. I think good margins are more important with Facebook because uh, frankly, you can get cheaper purchases on TikTok than you can with Facebook. However, I would definitely recommend a minimum of at least a 2x markup or like a $20 margin if it's more of an expensive product. And then ideally you're looking for like a 3x markup or $20, which is what I normally look for with Facebook products. So now I'm gonna show you how to find these winning products. And the best way that I've found is literally just taking saturated products from Facebook, moving them over to TikTok, and then just freaking crushing it. And by the way, I'm doing TikTok ads on like three or four other stores, uh, not just the one I showed you. So um, yeah, I, I've tested a lot of products. And uh, basically what I've found to work is just going on adspy.com. I'll leave a an affiliate link in the description uh, for a free trial can't get that anywhere else. But uh, yeah, so basically just filtering down and I'll show you guys how to do this on AdSpy. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is go to buttons and then click shop now. So it's a bunch of like e-commerce ads. And then you're gonna wanna go to media type and then click video. Then you're going to want to choose the countries and you're just gonna type in United States there. And then as far as technologies go, that's where you can type in Shopify. So you know it's just going to be e-commerce, most likely going to be drop shipping. And then from there, you can just sort it by likes. And this is essentially going to show you the most successful ads on top. And then once this loads, you're basically going to see the highest scaled ads for e-commerce products. Here's the anti-theft backpack. 
here's the windshield scraper. Here's like a, a dog brush and uh, the eyebrow, um, whatever, <laughs> the fake eyebrow thing. Um, as you can see, if you just continue to scroll down here, you're going to see insanely successful products. And although I would never sell these products with Facebook because they are so saturated, I think it's a really good idea to move them over to TikTok and try testing them there. All right, so when it comes to store creation, I have a formula that I like to follow, but it's definitely not specific to TikTok ads, and it's really not like a, a make or break. It's just kind of something that I know converts and that I always use. So if you guys want to check out the stores that I use or the stores that I design uh, for my dropshipping stores, then definitely check out, I believe it's going to be the second link in the description below, where I'm going to link you to a video where I basically build a store from scratch. So Besides that, um, as far as store creation goes, I definitely recommend that you start with a general store just because you're going to be able to test a broad range of products and not really have to worry about um, you know, targeting anything specific. And then as far as your actual like store building goes, really the only things that I can say is having a clean, simple store design. And then uh, there's definitely some apps that I like to use, but um, some of those include SMS Bump, Looks, sticky cart and a couple of others like an email marketing app i also think it's worth testing like a uh, a stock countdown and um a few other apps but yeah definitely check out the video i believe it goes over apps and basically everything else that you need to know all right so when it comes to creative creation this is a uh, super super important and i would say that creatives are really the biggest thing with tiktok because i remember with a certain winner that i currently have i started testing it and it just flopped um, and then I, I ordered the product, made some content for it, and it, it just took off basically. So what I'm saying here is that your ad can make or break a product. And it's not necessarily even um, smart really to take a product from AdSpy and then just uh, use crappy content for it because you know that product is proven and there's a really good chance it's also going to work with TikTok. So in my opinion, the best way to make content for a product is to just go ahead and order it off Amazon then record around two to four minutes of nine by 16 demonstrations. For those of you that don't know, it's just like the default like TikTok format. So if you scroll through TikTok, all the videos take up the entire screen on your phone, which is what a nine by 16 is. I definitely recommend that you try different angles and then backgrounds. And then if you have people in your videos, then just try different people, if that makes sense. Once you have all the videos that you need, just go ahead and compile those on InShot. And then the only other things that I do besides just like trimming the clips down, speeding it up, and uh, maybe adding some transitions and music is just adding text for the sale and for the call to action. Like for example, if the product is 50% off, then I would just have some text that comes up at the uh, around 50% through the video. And it just comes up at the top and says 50% off. And then at 75% through the video, that text is replaced by another piece of text that says get yours now or click shop now or something along those lines. And then I would definitely recommend that you start out with three different ads. This is what I do on Facebook as well, just so that you know that once you actually test the product with interest and, you know, test it a lot more that you have the best creative possible, or at least a pretty good creative so that you're not wasting money. So those three different ads should have at least one with a different scroll stopper. And then obviously just mix in some different clips, uh, different like durations, and then just, you know, kind of move the clips around if that makes sense. So the other option for content creation is not one that I think I can legally recommend. And I'm not recommending you to do this, but it is an option. Um, so basically what you can do, not saying you should do this, is uh, you can basically just go on AdSpy and search up a product and find a ton of videos for that product. And it's super, super easy on AdSpy. You just click download and you have a video. If you can't find good creatives on AdSpy, then you can always go to YouTube and uh, try to find really good videos on there for your product. And then uh, once you get those videos, basically what you should probably do is crop them down to either a one by one or a four by five format. And then just put them on InShot just like the other video. The only difference here is that you're going to essentially put it in a 9x16 background. So basically you have a 1 by one video and then the rest of the, the 9x16 space is just blurred. 
Basically what this does is it just makes your video look a lot better and due to my test it just converts a lot better than just having a one by one format with like a black space at the top and bottom with TikTok ads. It also allows you to move up the actual video content because if you just have a one by one then it's going to be in the middle of the video and it roughly like I would say a fifth of that video is going to be basically taken up because there's going to be text on top of it because that's just where TikTok likes to put their ad copy. All right, so now I'm going to be showing you guys how to create an ad step by step with TikTok ads. So basically, once you get everything set up, including your pixel, which I'm going to go over in a video that's linked in the description below, um, you can basically just go ahead and create your first campaign. So in order to do that, obviously, just go ahead and click create. And then uh, you can just simply click conversions because that's really what you want to optimize for. Uh, traffic and video views I have seen to kind of increase your spend if you're having issues with that. But uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So you can just go ahead and name this example and then click continue. And I'll essentially show you what I found to work best for me here. So just go ahead and click select placement. I don't know why that, that is not clicking. Anyway, uh, it seems like TikTok is the only thing that really converts for me. And uh, the others are really only available in like kind of minor countries like India and Japan and stuff like that. So I wouldn't really recommend that you use those. From here, you can just go ahead and put your URL and just go ahead and select your pixel as well. Display name is basically either gonna be your company name or your product name. Um, so for this, we're just gonna put example product. And then uh, for your profile image, I would definitely recommend that you find a transparent logo for your brand and just upload it here. That way it doesn't like take up too much of the video because it's transparent, it actually shows as transparent on TikTok. So as far as the category goes, this is pretty self-explanatory. Just try to find something that roughly relates to your product. So we'll go ahead and choose apparel and uh, we can do men's clothing. As far as ad tags go, I would definitely recommend that you basically just describe your product in very rough terms, but a lot of rough terms. So let's say we're selling a men's t-shirt that has um, Calvin Klein on it, right? So you can do like Calvin Klein, you can do like fashion, you can do t-shirt, and basically just doing a ton of stuff that may or may not relate to your product. Like for example, um, you could do something like shopping mall because the demographics may align on that term so yeah i wouldn't say ad tags really have a huge impact on your ad i know that it only impacts the learning phase and then once it gets past the learning phase ad tags do nothing but i would say that you really want to max these out so have at least 20 ad tags well you can only do 20 ad tags but i would say have at least 10 and then ideally have 20 ad tags and you're going to find out depending on your product that you're probably going to run out of terms and that's totally okay for me, I use a lot of terms like TikTok or cool or shopping and just like tons of really basic terms um, simply because I want to have as many tags as possible. As far as allowing users to comment, I would say that this is a good idea starting off. However, you may find out that it improves your results later on if you go ahead and turn off commenting. As far as automated creative goes, I normally just leave this on but I haven't noticed it has a huge impact on either the performance of your ads or the essentially um, creation of your ads, but I will say that it speeds it up a little bit just because you don't have to duplicate ads whenever you are adding an ad to an ad set. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you have multiple ads on one ad set, then you can choose automated creative and it's just quicker. So as far as this goes, it's basically just where you select your custom or your lookalike audiences, which we don't need to worry about on our first ad. And then uh, as far as the location goes, I found that if you target outside of the US and also obviously include the US as well, but these are the countries that I've found to work best. And if you just do the US, that's gonna be fine as well. Or if you just do these countries, that's gonna be fine as well. I've noticed that if you target worldwide, with TikTok ads, it's just gonna blow your budget on countries like India or Taiwan where people actually aren't going to buy your stuff and you're just wasting money. As far as gender and age go, I would probably just leave these blank unless it's very, very obvious. Like if you're selling makeup or something like that, then yes, it would make sense to narrow it down. But until your insights tell you differently, 
probably just leave all of this blank. As far as interests go, I wouldn't necessarily recommend messing with that at all on your first ads because we're looking for more of like a broad product with TikTok ads. So it should theoretically work if you don't have any interest at all that you're targeting. As far as budget goes, I generally start off at like $20, $25, depending on the price of the product. And then I'll just go ahead and scroll down to your bid. The bid is massively important with TikTok ads. And really, that's the biggest thing I think that I've kind of learned and that I've kind of benefited from tweaking with and just playing around with. Because uh, like I said, the bid is really going to impact like everything about your ads. And the most important thing is getting it to spend. So what I found is it's probably smarter to start your bid off at around $20 or maybe like the price of your product. Like for example, if your price was $15 and you could just start the bid off at 15. Now, what I will say here is that you don't necessarily want to keep a high bid. Ideally, what you want to do is find the cheapest bid that your ads will still spend at. So for example, if you start off at a $15 bid and they spend like crazy, that's cool. Maybe you can try a $13 bid or an $11 bid or a $9 bid or something like that. What I will say is that both of my winners, well, really all of my winners, I would say, have a bid between eight and $10. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that you try to get it low, but just start high-ish at least so that you know your ads are going to spend. Now we're moving on to our ad. Now this is pretty simple, but really what I would just recommend that you do is type in your product name. Like for example, we're selling that t-shirt. So we're gonna say Calvin T shirt and then we're going to do something like now 50% off shop now and then you can't do emojis on tiktok ads so what i personally like to do is just google copy and paste arrow and basically what we're going to want to do is just go to the first link up here and go ahead and find an arrow like i think that hmm Maybe this arrow would be good. Or we could, uh, I, I don't know, this is not even a big deal concerning about launching the app, but uh, we'll just put this arrow right here so it points to the shop now. And then we're basically done. Obviously, you need to upload your ad right here. But other than that, we just created our first TikTok ad. Now, we're going to want to do this at least two more times with separate ad sets. You can literally just duplicate what you just made and go ahead and change the creative so that you're testing your three different creatives at once. All right, so now we're going to be talking about the first steps after you launch your first TikTok ad. So there's a lot of things that can happen, some of them good, some of them bad. First, we're going to be talking about the bad results. So A, it's either not spending your budget or B, it just spent your budget and you got no purchases and it's just wildly unprofitable. So some things that you can try doing if you're pretty confident that you have a winner is just duplicating your ad group. I found that this can really help it spend and it can also have like vastly different results than what you previously got, which is very interesting to me, honestly. Another thing that you can do if your ad is not spending is just go ahead and increase your bid. In addition, you can try re-triggering your review if it's not spending or even if you're getting bad results. The last thing that you can try doing, either if it's not spending or if you're getting bad results, is just getting better creatives. If your ads are spending and getting you pretty decent results, then there's a lot of things that you should try doing. One of those is testing multiple different lower bids, just like we were talking about earlier, and also trying to find out exactly who's buying your product. You can use the reporting tab that's on the top right on TikTok ads to kind of find out exactly what your CPAs are for each certain demographic. And then you should narrow it down to the people that are buying the most and that are obviously the most profitable. In addition, you should try testing different interests, also different ad copies, different scroll stoppers, and just a ton of different things with your creative. Now, I would just recommend that if your product is doing absolutely amazing and just launch like 20 or 30 or 40 ad sets testing all different interests all different bids all different like everything and then you're going to see pretty quickly what's working and what's not you'll be able to kill off what's not working and just scale a lot quicker on what is all right so speaking of scaling we're going to be talking about that last so basically what i would recommend you do is just focus on your creatives 
I have found that if you just duplicate an ad set that's doing really well, it kind of sucks. So what I've found myself doing is duplicating an ad set that's doing really well and switching out the creatives. And that usually works really, really well. So it's important to have a ton of winning creatives. I will tell you for my top winners, I've tested like over 40 ads. So that should tell you how aggressively you should be testing your creatives. In addition, it's super important to optimize your store. So I definitely recommend you keep track of your conversion rate and just kind of make changes almost every single day, just kind of tweaking stuff and seeing what you can optimize to get the best conversion rate possible. I would definitely recommend that if you do find a winner with your general store, just go ahead and make a niche store around that winner. Even if you're not super specific on the niche, it just looks more trustworthy and you're probably gonna have a higher conversion rate. Definitely keep testing your creatives, keep testing new interests, keep testing lookalike audiences, and also once you find a lot of good interests, try combining them into flexes. So flex targeting is basically where you take two or three or four or five or 10 or 20 different interests and you stack them all in one ad set. Those I have found to perform extremely well, almost better than normal interests or, or no targeting or anything like that. So I definitely recommend that you kind of diversify with your targeting and have some targeting flexes, some targeting single interest, some targeting no one, and also some targeting like lookalike audiences if you found those to work well for you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you got a ton of value out of it and that you got some practical steps that you can use to start generating a ton of profit using TikTok ads. I really, really encourage you guys not to sleep on TikTok. This is, in my opinion, the biggest opportunity as far as Shopify dropshipping goes that I have seen in, in the time that I've been dropshipping, which has been like almost four years at this point. So please don't take it lightly and just go absolutely crush it with TikTok ads. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Definitely feel free to comment below if you have any videos that you would like to see me make. Feel free to hit that big red subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you in the next one.